All right, now I want to talk about the fundamentals of using NPM, which the acronym could stand for Node Package Manager, but uh, if you go on the website itself, they'll tell you that it doesn't necessarily stand for Node Package Manager. Actually, on the home page, every time you visit it, if we uh, take a look here, you can see that uh, this will reload with a different acronym for NPM, but it is a package management tool nonetheless, and that's what we're going to be looking at the basics of today. So I have a directory here. This is going to be just an imaginary project. Um, Noisy Pirate Monkeys is the name of my project. There's nothing inside my directory currently, and I want to start a project. I'm going to be using Node, or NPM rather, as the tool for bringing in other libraries and managing those dependencies. So if I have tools that I'm using that run during development time, those are development dependencies. If I have libraries that I want to include in the finished project, those are dependencies. And there is a command from the command line that we use, npm init. This is going to create that initial project, setting everything up. If I just run npm init, it's going to prompt me and ask me a series of questions, or I can add the flag yes, and what it does is it just uses all of the defaults that I have configured. So name, this is my project, version number, uh, description, I can edit this uh, later. This is the entry point for my scripts, uh, scripts that I want to be able to run. So I can type npm test right here, and that's going to actually run whatever I've defined here as my script. So npm test there we are, and it's saying the test failed because of this little piece right here. It's exiting with an error code. If I go into brackets and I open that file up, let's say, um, here's my noisy pirate monkeys and package.json, that file exists. These are older ones right here. If I refresh this, those should disappear. Yeah, so package.json is the only thing inside this folder currently. Here's my package.json. I can come in here and I can edit this file at any point. We can change this exit 1 to an exit 0 and if I run that test command again now I get no error because 0 means no error. Alright, so that is the basic um, configuration you get. Now if you want to change any of the default options inside here, like I've written that Steve the Pirate is the name of the author and this is his email address. If I wanted to change that setting or say the version number, what I can do is I can say npm config set, oops, sorry, config set, and then I want to update init.author.name. And inside of here, I'll put my name run that. Now, inside this folder, I just have that package.json. I'm going to delete that file. There we go. Now I've got nothing inside that directory. I'm going to run npm init once more using the default yes to use my options. And there we go. There's the new author being used. And so from this point on, this is the author name that's going to be put inside of here if I use the defaults. Uh, version number, if I wanted to change that, I could say npm config, if I spelled it correctly, npm config set, and then the one that I want to update is version. So init.version. And then I put in a value. So I could say that I want to start at version, oops, 1. There we go. So version 1.0.0 will now be the default next time I run npm init. Okay, well that's the basic setup. Now I want to actually use npm to bring in dependencies, include things in my project. The command for doing that is npm install. Then you would put the name of a package. Optionally, there's a flag dash g or dash dash global, we can install something that's going to be global. So it's available to any project and I can call on that 
tool, whatever it is that I'm installing from anywhere in my system. Now you want to be very um, conservative about what you install globally. You do not want to install every node package globally. Most of them you're going to be installing within your project. Cordova is an example of one that I would install globally. And I can do this, npm install, setting the global flag. The flag can be put before or after the package that I'm installing. If you want to install multiple packages, you can just list them with spaces between them. So this is going off. There we go. Now Cordova version 7.0.1 has been installed globally. Now, that doesn't necessarily affect the project that I'm working on right now, but I have Cordova installed globally and can use that from anywhere in any project. So I want to install something locally. npm install or the shortcut, just npm i is the install command. As long as I don't put dash g or dash dash global, it will not be global, it will be local. And then I can say what I want to install. Bootstrap. Now I can just do this, hit enter, and it will create a folder called node modules and it will put bootstrap inside of there but I don't want version 3 dot whatever it is right now I actually want the version 4 beta of bootstrap so I can say at and then list off the specific version that I want of bootstrap now this will create the node modules folder inside my project it'll install bootstrap and all of its dependencies I also want to save the fact that I have this in my package.json file. That's the settings file for npm for this project. So I will say dash dash save. That will add all the information to my package.json file. So if I write it out now, package.json, take a look. Here down at the bottom we have dependencies. Dependencies are things that are going to be used by the end user. So when I put my project on a web server and somebody comes to visit my project, my website, it means that Bootstrap is going to be something that gets downloaded into the browser. It's part of the project. Dev dependencies are things that I'm going to use while I'm working on the project, but it's not something that needs to go to the end user. So if I have a package like that, let's say uh, node sass, that's one, npm init, or sorry, npm install, or just the letter i, and I'm going to say node sass, I want to install, but this one's not going to be a dependency, it's going to be a dev dependency. So we say save-dev. I hit enter. This is now going to be added to that node modules folder, and there will be a new section inside of here. There's dependencies and now there will be dev dependencies. There we are. Dependencies, dev dependencies. Want to add another one? Uh, let's say node fetch. Let's make it a dependency. So npm install node fetch and this is going to be, we'll say saved as a regular dependency. There we are, and we'll take a look again in the package.json file. There we are, node fetch and bootstrap are both dependencies, dev dependencies, node sass. And the caret character here, the caret character in front of the number, means that any version that starts with a 4, that's this or greater, and it starts with a 4, so anything up to but not including version 5.0 will be installed if there's a newer version. Okay, so that's npm init, npm init with the dash dash yes for using the defaults, npm config set allows us to change the options, we have npm install, install dash g, or i, short for install, the version numbers, and then the other cool thing about npm init, like if I take a look at my entire project right now, there we are. So I have node modules, and inside that there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to delete my package lock. Um, package lock gets created automatically whenever you're running these commands from the command line, not through another tool. 
uh, or not manually editing things, the package lock file gets uh, saved as kind of a, a cache for the current state of your project. So I'm going to remove node modules, I'm going to remove package lock. So I'll say recursively force node modules to be deleted. That's gone, and now I'm going to remove package lock.json just to show that this is all gone. Oops. Yes, I want to do that. There we are. All right, now nothing left inside of here except for my package.json file. If I look at the package.json file, we'll see that, yes, indeed, bootstrap, node, fetch, and node has are inside there. Now, the npm install command, or the shortcut, npm i, if I type that and I have a package.json file in my folder, what it will do is it will read this file look for the dependencies and the dev dependencies, and it will install those automatically, as well as all of their dependencies. So if you have a brand new project, all I have to do is take this one file, copy it into the new folder, and then type npm space i, hit enter. Now, it's read this, it knows that I want these three things, it knows that I want the dependencies for these three things, and there it is. So it's installed node sass, it's installed bootstrap, and node fetch. So these things are all now installed for me. 187 packages were added. Fantastic. So NPM, great tool, very useful for building up your projects. Take a look inside the folder, and sure enough, package lock JSON and node modules are now back inside there with all of these dependencies. All right, one last thing to show you guys before we sign off for today. NPM home. This will take you to the website for an NPM package. So most packages, things that, are, uh, that you would use NPM to install, are projects online. They will have a website. Bootstrap, for example. If I say NPM home bootstrap, hit enter, it's going to jump over to the browser and it's going to take me to this site. If I say NPM repo, and we'll say node fetch, for example, this is going to take me to the website for the repository for node fetch. All right, so a couple of very useful tools. Hopefully this helps you be a little bit more productive with your NPM managed projects, or if you haven't started using NPM, maybe now you'll feel confident enough that you can start to use them to help you manage your projects and the dependencies for those projects. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.